So it's really important the politicians at this crucial time of a general election when um, you know, issues can get heightened and debate can be quite fierce, that, they, that we remind politicians that they have a duty not to use toxic language, to think carefully about that. You mentioned the um, EU referendum campaign and there were significant times when that didn't happen and, and the language was bad. Uh, and you know many people contributed to that. Uh, and we saw in the week after the EU referendum a 57% spike in hate crimes. So you know there is, um, you know, it, it does have its impact. We're, we're doing some research on all of this at the moment to see how we can uh, show even more effectively that link. But I absolutely feel that um, what politicians say influences public opinion and influences behaviour and therefore we want them to be careful. Instinctively we know um, what is unacceptable. So I think that it's you know where uh, politicians demonise particular groups or where they blame particular groups in society for some of the ills of society or they cast aspersions. Um, so I think you know that's very clear in those instances. It's where politicians appeal uh, almost in a dog whistle way to uh, prejudice, um, whether that's around race or LGBTI or other issues. So I, I think I think you can um, you, you you know it when you see it. I think it's one of those things. We will at Amnesty be calling it out. So when we see it, uh, when we think that that is uh, what needs to be uh, tackled, we will be calling it out. Politicians need to be confronted. If you feel a politician is um, using language in the way that we've just talked about, then um, tell them that. Um, tell your local newspaper. Uh, tweet that you are uh, concerned about it. You know, use the communications mechanisms to bring pressure on that MP, uh, or that parliamentary candidate rather at that stage, mm -hmm. uh, to um, think more carefully about this. People should never be used as bargaining chips, uh, and they shouldn't be used as bargaining chips in the um, negotiations about Brexit. So what we'd like to see is um, allowing EU nationals uh, to stay in the, in the UK, to make that decision, not to make it contingent upon other things, uh, and, uh, and to do that clearly. We see practically every day um, another story about a family that is fearful for um, their position in this country, um, whether children will be able to go to school, all sorts of things. And this plays out in a wider field. It plays out in classrooms and, and playgrounds, in uh, work settings, in whether people are going to be offered jobs or tenancies. You know, it is affecting the way that people's lives are led. Uh, and we would like that sorted uh, and clear. Uh, and I'm sure that that will then have a, a really good impact on um, the ability of British nationals in European countries. Uh, to be treated uh, respectfully to. People have established themselves in different countries under um, being members of the European Union. UK is now pulling out. That should not mean that uh, um, British um, individuals um, in European countries or European individuals in this country should be put in really difficult positions.